All right, so as you may have noticed from my YouTube channel name, I am 35 and retired as of next Friday. It's my last day um, at my job where I've been for 17 years. And the first thing that my family and I are going to do is go on a eight week um, trip out west again to visit some national parks. We went last year and saw 11 of them and we're going again this year to see 17 of them, 55 nights in a tent. And I wanted to just offer a couple tips for um, folks going to the national parks of what we have found that's worked really well. And uh, hopefully that's helpful to some of you. The first thing I'd recommend is going to the national park website and asking them to mail you an informational packet. Um, I just write out uh, some text telling them who I am, um, when we're coming, how old my kids are, the sort of things that we're interested in, and then I just copy and paste it to, in this case, all 17 of the websites. And they mail you this packet, and in this case, they were extra um, personal by actually using my name in the letter and signing their own name, which is really um, evidence of how personable the rangers often are. They're extremely helpful. They're thrilled to see families coming into the park. They want you to have a good time, and they can give you they can give you contextualized advice. That's one of my big complaints with the internet and with TripAdvisor is you always go to these places and look up, you know, top 10 this, top 10 that. But if you're 90 and in a wheelchair or 19 and super athletic, you know, these things are either going to be way too easy for you or impossible when it comes to top 10 hikes and things like that. But if you give a ranger information about who you are and what you want to do and what your kids are into, they can really give you contextualized advice that really hits home. So in the packet normally comes um, some sort of letter saying thanks for contacting us. They send the uh, newsletter, which gives you sort of up-to-date information on road closures and what's going to be happening that season. Um, if you have children and you ask them, they will send you Junior Ranger notebooks, which the children can fill out when they're in the parks and at the end get a little badge, which really engages the children. Um, if you, In some cases, they have different ages. So you see here, uh, ages six through eight versus nine and up. So give the give them your kids' ages, and then they send you the maps. Um, and the maps are really helpful because these parks vary drastically in size. I mean, Yellowstone is enormous, and you know, Dinosaur National Monument is pretty small. And when you're looking at a map, you know, on your phone, we are constantly zooming and pinching, it's kind of easy to lose sense of the scale. And so you think, oh, that's only like three inches away, we'll get there before noon, but the park is huge. And these maps, because they have a scale in the corner, they, they give you a clearer sense of how big these places are. And sometimes they'll also have those timetables that say to get from point A to point B takes this long and point B to point C this long. And so there's just a lot of valuable information. The other thing I'll say about the maps is, uh, and maybe I'll just grab one really quick. Um, a lot of maps that you find for national parks are, are either favoring like the hiker or favoring the driver. And so, um, and so a lot of like, even if you buy them, they'll be really detailed for someone who's going to do a ton of hiking, but they're like useless for when you're in the car because they don't have a lot of good road information and campgrounds and things like that. And then other ones, are really tailored for the driver in the car trying to find the campground and then they're kind of useless for hikes and the national parks have come up with a really useful combination of information you need while driving in the surrounding area to get to the park and where the campgrounds are and what the lakes are called but then they also have like the main hikes the big common trails um, along with details of you know peaks and glaciers and things like that and then as I mentioned, I should have just showed this example, you know, they give you general estimates of how long things are going to take. And um, and then on the back side, they give you some information about the parks, which help to kind of start to already get to know the parks. And therein lies sort of a hidden benefit of this stuff. Um, enjoying a national park is more than just being in it and doing something. The preparation and the planning can be a lot of fun. The memories at the end can be special. And when you get this stuff in the mail, I'll be honest, it's like pretty exciting. Uh, we're so used to email and digital stuff and chat robots on the other side of our questions, but getting something in the mail that costs them five bucks to ship, all of this stuff is free. You don't have to pay a penny for it. Uh, there's two exceptions, uh, Yellowstone 
and Redwoods would not mail us Junior Ranger books. You had to buy them when you got there. I'm not sure why, but aside from that, all of this stuff was free. And it, it really just starts to get you engaged in the trip before you leave. It starts to build the anticipation and excitement. It helps you start to understand what you might see there and what they're known for. And it's just a really exciting way to begin to prep for your trip. So we love the national parks. I suspect if you're watching this, you have interest in them in well, as well. Um, they are extremely affordable compared to other options that one might have for traveling and vacationing. Um, they are beautiful. They are well kept and clean and are well ordered. And they really are, um, you know, one of the nation's best ideas as they sometimes are called. So I would encourage you to look up a national park nearby, um, go visit it, start exploring, and hopefully these steps will help you prep and have a more successful trip. Have a blast.